Game Master Tips Number 5 Campaign Building with Phil McCracken Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, Marab? Good, good. So anybody watching, this episode of Game Master Tips is all about campaign building with Phil McCracken. So I'm not going to get into a super deep conversation about Phil's background with gaming and GMing and his passion for cyberpunk and all that good stuff, because that is an, a whole episode in itself that, that we have on uh, Cyberpunk Uncensored. This is a more specific, you know, Game Master Tips. It's, it's more laser focused on tips and, and uh, specific conversations about being a Game Master. So we're going to stick to that this whole episode. I just want to talk to Phil about his process of campaign building. So Phil, let's get into it, man. Uh, you know, everybody right. knows you're, you're a GM. You've been doing it a long time. You love cyberpunk. Um, first off, do you ever, you, before we get into your process of campaign building, do you ever use you know, published campaigns, modules, and stuff? I have actually never used a published module in my entire time of game mastering. That's fine. I've taken little tidbits here and there, but usually it's just I read it just for the enjoyment of reading it, but I don't really use it in the game building. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of uh, uh, good GMs I know, or at least GMs who have been doing it a long time, they rarely run you know, published campaigns, but they will read them and extract goodies from them and learn from them. And, you know, all, all good gems, you, you know, you never stop learning or getting creative or coming up with something new to do in a campaign or with players. But um, but that's awesome. It's so funny. But like, yeah, I've noticed that trend in a lot of good gems and stuff. Um, they use it as, as a resource, not really as the tool it's made for, you know. But I do think that there's a good place for them, especially with new uh, GMs and people getting into the game. I think it's great for people to get a feel of how to do it you know oh yeah highly recommend it for new gms because you know use the resources that are available to you when i first started game mastering cyberpunk i mean literally when i first started there were no modules yet they came out later but when i very first started there were no modules so you kind of flew by the seat of your pants yeah no and let me remind anybody that's watching the video before we get fully into, into this there's a whole episode of Cyberpunk Uncensored featuring Phil that, that you can go check out and you'll learn about his history. Like he said, when he started and you'll, you'll hear him make those references, he's been GMing a long time. He knows Cyberpunk in and out and stuff and it's a, he's, he's a great dude. Um, but yeah, like check out that episode to learn more. But let's get into it. Uh, so w now when you do create your own campaigns, you know, say you've, you've already got a, a, a group of players or maybe you take it before that. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Uh, how do you create a campaign? Do you take into account you know, what players and roles they're playing and all that before you kind of construct? And how do you start? I always like to have my player's character in my hand. That way I can pour over them, see what I can use, what's good. Not necessarily that I'm going to use everything in their background or in their life path, but some sort of nugget that I can take with me and build upon that. But um, seldom do I create an adventure first and then add characters. I feel you have to try to shoehorn them into your adventure when you do it that way. I'd rather have them as the core and build the campaign around that. Yeah, it feels way more natural that way. And that's a good point, too, that you brought up about, you know, looking at players' life paths, right? And then when you start creating a campaign, not using all of it, not making it, you know, feel like it's so made up or, you know, whatever, railroaded into just all their shit. It'll feel cheesy, right. you know? But finding, like you said, a good little nugget, something that works for the campaign you have in mind and that fits in and then you construct from there and it, it just gives them a little personal attachment to it by taking something from their life path. And that's a great tip right there. But, uh, but yeah, once you start getting that in mind, you know the players that, you, you know, the players that you're playing with, the, character, you know, the characters that they have, the roles they chose, you went through the life path, you, you found a nugget or two that you can incorporate in. What what's the next step for you in creating a campaign and like you know walk me through your process before you hit the table with the guys you know with the team. All right. After we've got the uh, a loose, you know, uh, campaign idea, and I don't like to write it out, set it in stone. I like to have bullet points because I find that you know, if it's so rigid, then I find myself trying to you know, steer the campaign in one direction or another. So. If I can get the bullet points down, then I'm good. You know, if I have my, you know, my, I guess you would say if you were a video game, checkpoints. You know, 
Yeah, if yeah. I get my checkpoints in order, then okay. Hey, they they they're out the starting gate, you know. And now they've made checkpoint one, and da 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 da. So, I like to have all my bullet points, the important things that you know I really want to be part of that adventure or that story arc. I yeah, like po points of like points of interest that have to be in it to make sense for the story. Like they, you know, at one point they've got to like find this file or meet this person to learn this piece of information. Hopefully, if they interrogate Correct. properly. Or, but I love what you said about not writing it out fully, not making it so railroaded. Like now I've got to make my players follow this fucking path because I wrote it out in detail exactly this way. But making your bullet points because, as you know, man, players will. You know, it's an open world. They'll throw a curveball at you. They'll think of something you didn't account for. You know, every everyone's time. a creative thinker. Every time, every time. Yeah. So yeah, once I get the bullet points down, I I launch with my you know session one. You know, and we've hopefully had a good session zero, like you've already you know talked about, mm -hmm. and see where they go with it. You know, here here's this thing, like you say, you here's this file you have to find, or this person, or uh, something like that. Where are you guys going to go with it? Yeah. And I'm at that point. I'm the one hopping around, not them. It's like, okay, they've gone over here. Let me come right. over here. <laughs> yeah. Do you find yeah, being a good? Do you find it kind of a, a thing where, like, you know, you'll lay out the campaign, your bullet points, your main thing, like maybe just for the sake of conversation. Let's say you come up with this thing where, like, um, you know, they've got to rescue this guy from some location. He's been kidnapped. Too, and you're like, okay, cool. Well, I, I got to start off with them obviously getting hired by this corporation that, or this booster gang or whoever's going to hire them to go get this person. If, unless you make that person in somewhere in someone's life path, so then they, they, they want to go rescue them when you tell them they heard that they're captured, you know. But you always start mm -hmm. with like those points. And then do you find it kind of like you got your bullet points that you want them to meet? You don't want to force them, so you try to bait them with like little you know, morsels of, I don't know, rewards or hints of story or things to investigate and then just hope your players like catch on and go with it? Or how do you kind of make sure they hit those bullet points? Or are you, or do you move those bullet points around based on where they go and what they do? How do you, how do you work with that? Uh, number one, the helpful NPC, you know, there's usually at least one that, you know, oh, didn't we see this thing back there like 10 minutes ago that they might have forgotten, not giving them any information that they didn't already have, but Hey, didn't we see this piece of paper back here on this shelf or they're trying to jog their memory or as you say move the bullet points around yeah 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 because i found myself point. doing that you know moving something because it didn't work out or they didn't catch the hint and, and but you brought up a great point and that's another tip i want to make serious note of is you know a gm can use an npc to not force a player to do something or make it exact, you know, don't be so rigid like Phil said, you know, be flexible, make it fun for the players. It's an open world after all. But uh, but using NPCs to kind of help at least guide a little, drop a hint that they may have missed or for or a piece of information they forgot about. That's a great point. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And as old mentor of mine used to say, because he, he was a, a Dungeons and Dragons player from since it was Chainmail. <laughs> oh, like, shit. <laughs> If your party's going down a road and it forks, the adventure's on the left fork, but they go to the right. Well, you pick up the adventure and you put it over there. Exactly. That's what I was saying. Like, I've moved bullet points before. Um, I haven't really, you know, I have used NPCs to drop things, but it wasn't intentionally. I didn't think of that or realize uh, in doing that till you mentioned it. And now I'm going to definitely have that in a back pocket as a tool. That's a great tip. But, uh, but I have moved bullet points before you know like i've had like certain oh, things yeah. where i was like oh this is going to be over here and this is this is the only way they can get to it and it's part of its own little side mission and then they come you know the players man they'll come up with their own side missions and things that are just as cool sometimes cooler you know so i'll be like fuck yeah. i didn't even think of that yeah let's go that route and i'll just move that thing over here you know and <laughs> make it work <laughs> precisely 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 so once i've got that going again i just kind of like at that point i've wound them up and i'm letting them run you know, say, okay, here's your direction. Go for it. Let me see what you got. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you know, at that point, you know, I'm a passenger. I'm just trying to, you know, hang on to them and where they're going. Yeah, and I think that's a good point to make, too. Like, good GMs aren't really, you know, like, a good GM is definitely a storyteller. You'll lay out what's up. You'll give, you know, the key points, and you're in control. You're doing the rules. You're making final decisions if a rule isn't, set in a way or whatever you know you are in control 
But it is important to make note, like you said, you know, the players are the heroes. Even in Cyberpunk, there's no heroes. It's fucking dangerous. You know, it's a even playing field, you know. You, uh, oh, yeah, my current campaign, they're definitely not heroes. Yeah, like, uh, hey, you can die easy in Cyberpunk, you know. But, um, but yeah, like a good point is, you know, to, to make sure that you let the players create the story. I guess that's a way to put it, you know, like hero or not, whatever it is. The players are creating the story. You're laying out the po the potential missions and clues and goodies and rewards and repercussions and running the rules and you're doing all that, but got to be super flexible. Got to let the players build, man. Because like you know, the I, am but a, I am but a humble GM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like have fun with it, be creative, but let the players kind of direct it. And like you said, at that point, you're on for the you're on for the ride or whatever. You know, I think that was a great way to put it. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, I like to analogize it sometimes. It's like, it's like creating art. I give them the, the canvas and the paints. I let them what, make whatever you're going to make out of these, you know, Yeah. the colors, you know, you got this booster game, that's a color. And you got this corporate over here. That's another color. The canvas is Night City. And okay, here's your artwork. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. That's great. And now when you set up the campaign and I understand like you know you'll kind of work with the players you'll learn the life path you'll do your whole session zero you know research you'll make your you'll have your mission in mind whether it's find a file rescue a person take someone here do whatever and I and that's always you know based on the the roles that the players chose you know the style of game you might construct I imagine um, right. then you make your bullet points and you just kind of help hint and guide and you know go with the players to make this hopefully happen and roll with the the punches and flexibility and stuff but that's great that's structuring a campaign and doing all that how do you like to to start it typically and i know like every campaign's different like i've started one recently where the team was already like no weapons no armor zip tied in bathtubs in a yakuza torture facility and they started like that and i told them like what happened to them the night before and now they're waking up here and like you know but you know the typical is start with like a call from your corporation or fixture, someone's hiring you for a job or you're checking the Merc board, you're reading a scream sheet. How do you typically start a campaign or what are some ways, you know? Well, I'll use my current campaign as a, a guideline. Uh, one of my uh, players is a techie and he works in this building that's half office space, half apartment building. Another character is a, a trauma team. Someone explodes in the apartments above his office the first my techie so he goes up to investigate there's these black jumpsuited guys dragging out well a body without a head nice. here comes trauma team they're investigating because they got a call they see the guy and these black suited guys so of course their job is to you know extract the body even if it's just a body it's still a client mm -hmm. and then they all kind of converge from there Nice. It, something happened in a central focal point that drew everybody to it, and there you go. See, I love that. I love, uh, like I said, like typical missions, you know, or like a session. Even if you have a campaign that might be broken into multiple sessions, I see a lot like start with, like I said, a scream sheet, a call from someone hiring. Um, you might start with like a call from a life path person telling you a situation happened. But I am, a, and, and I'm a fan of all those because it's great storytelling. It's great build and climax and it's like it just it works it's a traditional right. thing you know but i am a big fan of thinking outside the box like i said starting just in the mix of something or whatever and uh and, and i love that you did that that uh you know just starting uh just so there's a tip for gms like don't be scared to start a session or a campaign in the middle of like a situation or a scene you know what i mean like think of uh movies and stuff not all of them you know some of them start with like just in it you know and it's exciting it can make something different right. and i cannot remember that what the, that i can't remember what that's called but it's like you know instead of like walking and then start to try you just you open up running yeah yeah it's like i think it's fun to do that you know sometimes but that's cool that you do that um yeah any other random tips i think we, we kicked out like a handful of tips here on campaign building is there anything that we forgot to mention you know i hate i hate ending a a, a great talk about campaign building when i think we wrapped it and then afterwards I'm like oh shit but uh, uh, I'll add to the comments if we forgot something. But is there is there anything that comes to mind? I think I think we got it. Um, I can't. Let me, no, I can't say. I can't think of anything. Let me. If I can bring up one thing that um, even with the NPCs, don't be afraid to you know 
put yourself into it. You know, don't just, you know, like in one of my uh, games, they go to this little gun shop and there's this little old bald man with, you know, thick glasses and it's kind of neat. And it's a, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, oh, no, have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, let's, let's say that real quick too, because that's a good point to make. I do like doing that myself. Like, I was playing a fixer in another friend's game. Uh, this guy, John, John the Wise, he streams, he does games just like how, I, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I do and others. And I'm a big fan of his. If you haven't seen, look him up. He's, he's awesome. But I was playing a fixer in one of his games that I really liked the, the character creation for, a guy named Dutch, um, which has actually made its way into some film production stuff I'm doing. I'm doing like a, a cartoon sort of thing but i don't want to get too much into that yet but uh right 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 but uh yeah the, i i work it in i worked it into a previous uh, session we were doing before we got into full red rules cyberpunk red um, when i was doing like a hybrid version 2020 start you know jump start okay. red and um and for the players you know the fixer that they would deal with was this guy dutch and i would play him as i would play dutch in the game so it was kind of fun to put myself into it in that sense. But I like how you said too, to actually put yourself into it too. Like, you know, like GMs can totally run a game and let the players be the ones or whatever. But uh, yeah, you control NPCs, but don't be scared to totally make an NPC someone that you enjoy doing and make it a background. Don't be the leader, obviously, you're the oh, yeah, GM yeah, still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it is fun to kind of, I don't know, put yourself in a little bit and, and don't be scared to do that. That's really fun. Thanks. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think I think we covered everything. Uh, I think we got a good idea of campaign building with the you know the session zero dropping in key points of life path stuff here and there when you can, making your bullet points, but don't write it out fully in concrete because you know players are gonna you know things are gonna come out of left field. You got to be flexible. Um, you know if if players are missing certain key points or bullet points and stuff, don't be scared to move those around. Don't be scared to uh, drop an NPC and that maybe reminds the players of what they said or re- reiterates a hint or something. Uh, I think I think I, I did a little Cliff's Notes there <laughs> of, of the tips you said. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. But yeah, any, anybody checking this out, definitely look Phil up. Uh, he, he's one of the moderators in the Cyberpunk Uncensored group. He's been on the podcast numerous times. I'm excited to have him as part of the Game Master Tips. And definitely go uh, check out the Cyberpunk Uncensored episode that is all about him. We're going to get into his background and all kinds of stuff and just have a fun conversation about Cyberpunk. Um, if this video is helpful to you as a GM or player or whatever, you just like Cyberpunk and you like this, Please give us a like, give us a share, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and join us for some live gameplay. And, uh, yeah, any last words, Phil? Um, if uh, anyone's on the Cyberpunk Uncensored Facebook group and you want any more uh, tips on me or anything that I do in my game, please shoot me a DM, and I will happily respond. And uh, I love talking to new players, even new GMs. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite things to help people into this world that Rob and I love so much. Hell yeah. No, and I see you all the time with, uh, I think that's how I, we first became friends online and I got you into, you know, helping run run our group and became part of it in the podcast and everything was because I would see you just posting regularly and I could tell you were into it, but it was great opinions and ideas and content and like, uh, you know, you're, you're great with that. And I love the fact that you're, uh, you're open to talk to players and GMs and just, uh, I don't know, a great part of the community. Uh, you're very helpful. And I think that's really cool, man. I, I really appreciate you. Thank you. So yeah, thanks for joining thank me, man. Thanks for everybody tuning in. Uh, take care, Phil, everybody else. Take care. We'll see you thank next you time. Guys.